I think the important part for me is that someone's life has changed that day, you know, when you perform, even if it's momentarily, even if they get to forget about their worries for the hour and a half that you play for, that is very rewarding to me. And it's quite a shame that during a time like this, people um, don't really have that outlet. I grew up in a charismatic church, a Pentecostal church, um, and the band was usually three to four piece, so you would have drums, bass, guitar, and keys. Um, and as Afa mentioned, you know, it was char charismatic, so it was like quite eccentric gospel, if you want to call it that. The church I grew up in, in particular, it was, you could say the congregation majority was of Caribbean heritage. So a lot of the music stemmed from the Caribbean, but also, you know, was influenced by American gospel as well. Um, you know, a lot of the popular hymns and so on and so forth. Yeah, we played a lot of styles of music growing up in church. And I guess that also contributed to, you know, my growth as a musician. Picking up songs is part and parcel of our career. Um, it's, it's what we have to do, basically. And even beyond my instrument, I try to, at times, break down parts to understand it even more. And I find that by breaking apart parts from a record on other instruments, especially like if it's a bass line, it helps me to understand the drums more rhythmically, if that makes sense, and um, finding new ways to lock in with the bass line, for example. But yeah, that is something that is a skill that is required to be in this industry. A lot of producers today, the way in which they produce, it isn't with a musician in mind. It's what works for the record. And our job as session musicians is to break down these patterns that are quite unorthodox to make them work for live which is fun. It's challenging, but it's fun. Some people don't enjoy it, but I absolutely love it. Even if it's the most mundane part, I, as long as the sonics are right, I enjoy playing it. So that's what matters the most for me. For me, my qualifications for cho symbol choices would boil down to how well they sit sonically in a mix. What I tend to find with Sabian is that since I've played them, Every sound engineer I've worked with always compliments them and says they sit well in the mix. And that's the thing, the, the range is so wide. Like if I'm turning up to rehearsals and it's a new artist, for example, I'll bring more than one set of cymbals with me. And it gives the sound engineer a, an opportunity to say, oh, this ride isn't as potent, maybe use the other ride, or this crash doesn't have as much decay. So honestly, since I've joined them, I've never had a moment where I thought, ah, oh, this ain't gonna work for this project. Every single project I've used it on, it's just been perfect for me. And I've not looked back since. In terms of crashes, I think the legacy crash is just, you can't go wrong with it. That, it's, it's a thin crash, traditional finish. I actually prefer traditional finish symbols over brilliant, but there are some brilliant finish symbols that I do like in the Sabian range. For example, the HHX Evolution 18 inch and then the HHX Ozone as well. Can never go wrong with those two, but the Legacy Crash for me, it just works in every application. And I think I've used it on every gig. I, yeah, I've used it on every gig since I've signed with Sabian in 2016. I think one of the words that comes to mind is integrity. And the reason why I use the term integrity is because whenever I play any style, I want to ensure that I've got the feel right. So whatever the groove is, um, whatever the syncopation is, I want to make sure that it's spot on. And, you know, sometimes I will sit, if I'm learning a song, I will sit and I will just play a section of the song for 10, 20 minutes, just to get the feel under my fingers. Um, so yeah, I think that's the best way I would describe my sound is integral. So if I'm playing hip hop, it's gonna sound like hip hop and the groove is gonna be correct. If I'm, I'm not a jazzer, but if, if I was called to play jazz, I can get the swing feel right and I can get it feeling good. One thing that people will say about me is that sonically, I always understand the assignment. If it's, let's say for example, it was a rock sound that was needed, I'm gonna have a snare that kills that job in terms of just sitting right in the mix. If it's R&B and I need a high pitch snare, I'm gonna have that. Rule number one, there's no such thing as perfection. The moment anyone decides that they are perfect, they've screwed it for themselves because there's always room for improvement. There's always something new to learn. So for me, I always try to improve one way or another, whether it's learning a new genre that's like, like for example, in the UK right now, 
the hottest genres right now would be like drill and like maybe Afrobeat. I'm 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 of Caribbean heritage, but obviously, if we talk about ancestry far back, you know, definitely traces back to Africa. So I've gone out of my way to learn some of that stuff. And you know, I used to play in African churches as well as the fact that I played in the Caribbean church. And I just I try to I try to learn music from different parts of the world. I, I don't. I don't just stick to pop, if that makes sense. I try to learn things that are out of my comfort zone, where, when and where possible. To this day, I still practice like some Latin things just to improve in terms of independence. Those are the kind of things I look into. I look into the things that I might not necessarily apply now. Maybe one day, who knows? I might play for a Latin artist one day in my life. I have no clue. But I understand that that genre there's all those things about that genre that can help me improve my playing overall. So I try to look for things in different genres that can help my playing overall. That's kind of my mentality and approach.